take the actions and ask your lawyer if they are sitting there holding up the thing and going, oh, we'll give them another week or I sent their, their lawyer an email and I haven't heard back in three weeks. You have to take the lawyer and be like, please file, get me a subpoena to get these records and, and stop this hamster wheel of you wasting money, hoping that they'll give you a piece of paper. Just go get it. Welcome to another episode of Negotiate Your Best Life. I am so excited today. I love when I get to interview my friends who are also so brilliant. And that is what is happening today. And this is somebody that I've actually introduced to all of you before. And I only bring back people who are people who I know bring so much value, so much value. And that is the case here with Tracy Malone. Oh my goodness. She is absolutely amazing. She is the founder of the website Narcissist Abuse Support, which has, I don't know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people who use it every single day from all over the world. And she has a huge YouTube channel as well. And she is a divorce coach, a speaker, and really has helped. I, I can't even tell you probably thousands and thousands of people herself from all over the world, as far as people who are dealing with uh, uh, the, the effects of narcissistic abuse. And so I know that you are really a force all over the world in this space. So I'm, I'm so grateful to be able to bring you back and you've, you've written the, the book, uh, divorcing a narcissist. You can't make this shit up. And, and I really, um, so glad to have you here. And today we're going to be talking about mistakes that people should avoid and, um, in dealing with narcissists and, and the break breakup. So thank you, Tracy, for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I love being here with you too. It's like old friends week. So thank you for having me back. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about some of the things that people should, um, uh, you know, mistakes that people should avoid. For, well, first of all, not only do you know about them just because you've been helping people in this space for I don't know, probably more than a decade now, right? But the reason why you got into this is because you probably made a few uh, along the way yourself, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a two-time uh, whoopsie. Yeah, I definitely got snagged twice. And one I wrote the book about and one was even worse. And here I am changing the world because I'm using my pain for good. Yeah. And, you know, there's an old saying that you are most equipped to help the person you used to be. Ooh, nice. Yeah. 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 Like it for sure. Yeah. And so, and that's kind of how we met because we both have dealt with this. We both were, well, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I, I didn't divorce a narcissist, but I've dealt with them in my personal life. And, you know, you and I have talked about that. And, and, and so we both know the pain. We both know the, the, the drama, the chaos, and, and we both know the shame of it and, and having to admit and not wanting to admit and all of that. And, and so you, if you um, could just share a little bit about your story for the people who haven't heard um, about, you know, what happened to you? Um, well, I did not know I was divorcing a narcissist nor married to one um, until about two and a half years later. Uh, that's when it all un unfolded when I met this other person and he was even worse. In fact, yesterday was the anniversary. That was eight years since I was arrested by him. And when that happened, uh, I got out of jail the next day and someone said, he's gaslighting you. So I looked it up and that was him 
that was my ex-husband, that was my ex-in-laws, oh my god, that was my mother, my father, my sister. I mean, it just opened up like an onion my entire life. No wonder I, I kept marrying them and dating them was because I didn't see it, right? So once I did all the work and, and years and years of work and reading books and studying and therapy and everything I could do, I started support groups. And I was like, okay, let's see if we can get people together. And then we would have 60 people in the room. And then I had two support groups and we'd have 40 and 60 people in a room in a month. And it was like a hundred people a month were coming. And I had no idea the, the girth of this. So I was like, well, all right, now we're going to educate them. I, I hated the whole, like, let's just complain all day. What do we do to heal? How are we going to help them? And so then I started studying and bringing them, let's learn boundaries this week, guys. Let's do this. And, and you know, that sort of unfolded into the work I do today. Mm. Yeah. I mean, jail, <laughs> no. arrested. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I've heard tell that story, mm -hmm. right? I mean, because how many times has a narcissist put somebody into that position. And I mean, I've just recently was talking to somebody and, and, you know, what happens is you or you, you, the collective you, somebody will, will say, you know, I'm going to tell the truth of what happened or whatever. And then that narcissist will want to smear the person. Mm -hmm. and go and tell everybody else about how bad that person is. And so they go and have that person falsely accused, falsely arrested, falsely accused of domestic violence mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And then, yes, I mean, they get falsely accused. CPS gets called sometimes 30 times to people's home because the narcissist is lying. Yes. I, oh, my God. Child protective services. I mean, how many times? And then, and then that child protective services really starts to believe that that other person is a terrible father or a terrible mother over and over again, because, you know, they think, well, where, where there's smoke, there's fire. They must be that person. Mm -hmm. And, and then that malignant narcissist just really starts getting that everybody else to think that. And, and and it's a horrible thing and and it's it's so awful so let's talk a little bit about what are some of the first mistakes that people will make well i would say they haven't maybe released reality yet they haven't figured it all out so they have magical thinking they think that they'll be okay. My ex said everything will be fine. They're not going to hurt them. They'll be fair, air quotes, fair, right? I mean, getting sucked into that is usually just the blinders for them to like placate you enough to go, oh, they won't hurt me. And then they're hiding the assets, right? It's buying them time. So the magical thinking of that they won't hurt you and they've got your back if, if you even suspect that they're a narcissist, then you have to let go of that one because this is going to be an all out war. You and I both know we've seen it a thousand times that this is going to be the fight for your life. So if we are delusionally believing that they'll be fair, we're not putting our armor on for war. So we really have to understand that that is not the way to the end for this deal. Yeah. And here's the thing that I tell people all the time. And I, you know, I put that in my book too. It's like, if they were lying to you during the marriage and you know that they're li a liar and, you know, a, a lot of times people will sit, sit in my office as a lawyer and they'll, they'll tell me all the time they were lying, 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 but well, they're not going to lie to me now. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. You know, but now there this is going to be fair. Now they do want this to be amicable or whatever. They're not going to suddenly start telling the truth during the discard phase. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I mean, come on, people. This is when it's going to be so much worse. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, wake up. 
And, it, and they will. Sadly, they will wake up and it will be a, 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 you know, a smack in the face because it's reality. And then you're even more wounded and hurt because you had that false hope. Right? There's there's also the, the, the belief, if you think about this segment of the people who are going to divorce a narcissist, you know what? I don't want anything. Just take it all. Just I don't want anything. I'm not going to fight for the house. You just take it. And they think that's also going to get them their way. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, yeah, that no, that doesn't get you anywhere either because then now you've given up half your leverage or whatever else and they still won't leave you alone. Mm -hmm. Because now you think, oh, they're going to see how nice I've been mm -hmm. and and how good I've been because I gave them, you know, their entire 401k or whatever it is mm -hmm. and or I gave them the, all everything uh, you know, the whole house and all the contents and because all I wanted was the kids or, or whatever. And they're, they don't see how nice you've been. They don't see that as nice. They see that as, well, that was mine anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, or, or I gave them their business or whatever. They're just like, so that was mine anyway. Right. You, you didn't give me anything. If you think about it too, uh, the other kind of mistake they do is people don't really know everything that's on the plate and they settle before they even know. Like I've had people where the husband might be like this big giant plastic surgeon making millions of dollars a year. And they go, well, that's his business. I'll, I'll just, I won't even bother for it. I'm like, you know, you're entitled to part of that. And they're like, oh, that's too much work. And he won't produce the paperwork anyway. So they walk away from millions of dollars because they're being nice. And they think that it, this is going to help them. It never ends well. No, it does not. No, because you're giving away their leverage. They're they're giving away their leverage, right? And or they think that it's going to be too hard or or whatever, and they don't realize that. Well, hey, he's going to have to pay the fees anyway, mm -hmm. uh, right? And and they're like, oh, they didn't realize that, mm -hmm. but they didn't. You know, they didn't consult an attorney to find out that that the, you know, that they, that the husband was going to have to pay for the fees anyway on that. Mm -hmm. Not only were they entitled to it, but the husband was going to have to pay for the fees on the accountant, the fees on the attorney and the, and temporary support mm -hmm. along the way. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it goes into that whole, you know, they, most of the victims have been gaslit as you know. And so, They've been gaslit very often to the point in the divorce of there's no money. Why are you looking? There's nothing. There's nothing there. There's nothing there there. Right. Um, or they gaslight you and say, if you divorce me, I'll never see the children. Um, you know, no judge is going to let you have the kids. You're crazy. And so they believe that gaslighting and don't ask what their rights are. You know, that's part of this, too, is because of the gaslighting, they're frozen deers in the headlight. Mm -hmm. And they're really afraid to ask for something because they think they'll just be attacked anyway. So again, going back to the, I'll just walk away from his business. No problem. Just let me have my kid time or something like that. And that's a problem. Yeah, that's so true. And they think, well, you know, I've heard a lot of times people will say, you know, I'm never going to see my kids again. He told me I'll never see my kids again. Or I, you know, I, if I, if I leave the house, I won't get any part of the house or, or something like that. Right. And, and I've uh, many times in, in an initial client meeting, I, you know, I would tell um, the people I'd be like, well, but if your name is on the house or, you know, if it was purchased with, with, uh, with the marital funds, you get, your half of the house. I mean, and and certainly you, you you're not giving up rights to your children. I mean, you know, it, it, most states nowadays are a 50 50. I mean, and so, I mean, you're getting your half of the house. You're getting your kids. I mean, and and so that's that. And um and and I remember one time, I one of the funniest. It, it wasn't funny, but it, but it was sort of funny to me. Um, initial client meetings I ever did was. I, I was representing this emergency room physician, this guy. And after, you know, like he had been told that, you know, that 
he was not going to get his kids and all these things because, you know, the wife had was a narcissist and, you know, the same kind of a thing, right? Because it's reversed too. wives do the same thing to husbands all, all the time. And, and so afterwards he was like, oh my God, I feel so much better. And he's like, I don't know how I could ever repay you. He's like, I don't know, but if you ever need a laceration sewn or <laughs> such an offer, <laughs> it's like, I'm like, well, I hope I don't, but thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. Again, again, you made a really important point because so often the women um, get the, the, get the narcissist and that's what's talked about. There's a lot of people that only talk about women, um, and being abused, but the men get abused. And honestly, the cases that I have worked with, the women are worse. They are evil and they hide behind that cloak of, but I'm the mother and I'm the kid, you know, and I'm the, I'm the president of the PTA. How could I be the evil one? Right. But it's the mask. And so, the, the the female narcissists tend to really get away with a lot because of their role in the in the family and the believableness of well no he's the abuser you know and it's oh point, yes uh, I call them like, the pearl clutchers what me I would never uh, I don't do that I well, would. I, you know, I, it's like, because it's, there's always an element of, of plausible deniability with the covert narcissist. Mm -hmm. How could you accuse me of that? I was just, I, you, because there's always an element of care mm -hmm. in the way a covert narcissist um, tries to smear, right? So it's, I'm so concerned about, um, about, um, Johnny and, you know, being late so often at work lately, I just, you know, I'm just worried about, you know, just cause I'm thinking maybe there's something going on, you know, just because there's probably something with going on at home just worried about that just some concern you know and it's like oh probably nothing going on and probably you know johnny's not late that often or you know just worried because i'm just thinking maybe there's he's drinking a lot more lately mm -hmm. and uh you know just oh i, I wasn't saying anything there's just worried yeah what you know it's just that kind of thing, or it's like the inadvertent email that they left them off of. Uh, and so that person didn't make it to the meeting. Um, and oh, I thought, I thought I did have you on that meeting. What? Oh my gosh, I don't know how that happened, you know, and that sort of thing with the, the covert narcissists. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's always their innocence and their victimhood. Right, their victimhood. Oh, I, I definitely thought I had that discovery in there. I don't know how that month got left off. But, you know, right? I mean, it's always, that's why I call them the pearl clutchers. What? what? I love that. I'm going to use that to my pearls. I like the visual too. Yeah. <laughs> what could that be? Covert narcissists are a, a breed in their own and they're they're much harder to spot. Like I was married to one and I thought he was the most charming person on the planet. My my entire being to that day of divorce would have said he would never hurt me. I was one of those people with the false hope because he was selling it to me. I actually recorded a therapy session where he sat there to the therapist going, of course, I'll take care of her. She's my wife and I'll take care of my son too. And la, 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 la. And then complete implosion. None of that ended up coming true, but that was the lie. And I fell for it. I'm like, no, he said, and I believe him because I didn't know what a narcissist was at the time. Right. Because they're, and, and they are the victim, right? I mean, they're always the one that's the victim, right? And, and there's always that, you know, that 
the forgetfulness, they happen, they just inadvertently forgot something, um, or just, just like underlying that underlying rage, that underlying jealousy. It's just under the surface. It's just under the surface that you can't quite pinpoint um, because they're the victim. They're the victim. And and the, I think the covert narcissists are the worst ones for sure, because everybody else thinks they're so wonderful. They're so kind. They're so um, they're, they're the humanitarians. They're the ones that show up first at the hospital with the biggest basket. Um, mm -hmm. and, but nobody else sees what's really going on. They're the soccer coach, the girl scout leader, the president of the PTA, and that is giving them clout in the public eye. Well, they do so much for the girl scouts. How could they possibly be evil? really easily the door closed <laughs> and now they don't have to be the face that the mask was right exactly exactly and and it's really really hard so i mean i always tell people that in a divorce they're the ones that are going to smear they're the ones that are going to um have that element of plausible deniability they're the ones that are going to be um uh just under the radar like that, right? It's it's the it's it's that passive aggressive, that um, that that way. Whereas the, with the um, the the grandiose narcissists, they're the ones that will ignore the court orders. That will be much more likely to file the false pleadings. Much more likely to be the 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 impulsive the risk takers they you know they're they're easier to spot they're much easier to spot oh yeah yeah for sure and and and, and, and then the malignants are the ones they're the stalkers they're the they're the ones that are going to be out there you know saying that somebody's a child molester if they, if they're not they're way easier to spot yes yeah and but the accusations get bigger like the 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 covert the the allegations are to destroy you first with your family with your friends you know with your coworkers they they that's their their goal is just blow up your your you know entire reputation but the malignants they go deeper and they destroy everything they they just you know from your where you're going to live to this to that no security. They're going to go for your jugular and they're going to shake you until your body is gone. And they're just going to keep harping and harping and harping and making up things. As you said, the stalkers, the ones that, you know, hire people and you see a different car every day outside your house with a long lens aiming at your front door. They're the ones that, you know, change the alarm codes, you know, come in and sit in your driveway and hack into your computers at night. And I even had somebody recently who's car was connected to their apple watch and the husband took over the car somehow with the apple watch and was driving the car while she was driving and yeah. it was those are the ones that are malignant they will go to that level of you know they don't care they have absolutely no empathy for you for the fact like this guy who had me arrested found out his ex-wife was arrested three times he doesn't care it's like yeah whatever it it, it validates his point that she was the crazy one by her being in jail three right. times Right. Because that's the malignant because the covert, they don't want to get caught. They don't want to like the coverts want to stay sneaky. under the radar and stay sneaky because they don't want to necessarily have that mask, you know, like mm -hmm. unseen. Whereas the malignants are there. They have that antisocial personality disorder like overlay. So they're like they just don't stop. They don't stop they're like rabbit right? dogs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas the oh, the grandiose, they're just so in your face and so impulsive and so reckless all the time. They're just so easy to see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's why I think that's why I think the coverts are the worst ones. Yeah. Well, because again, we don't see them coming. Well, you know, most victims believed the lie. That's why I started with that sort of magical thinking. You're holding on to the person you thought they were, and you know dismissing a lot of the bad behaviors you've probably seen that all of a sudden you're going to like have all these eureka moments and go oh my god that was abuse oh oh they oh of course they did that yeah they never let me have any money oh yeah you know all the pieces start to come together 
um, because they were so sneaky. They were so charming and the abuse was done behind door and very stealthily. So, you know, that's where the danger is, is that we think we're dealing with the good guy or a good girl. And that's not what's going to happen. Again, the war is on and you're in a battle and you have to not believe their lies. Yeah. So true. And don't ever think that you're going to go to mediation early and you're going to get it done and go have, you know, the collaborative divorce and all of that. That's such a waste of time and a waste of money, mm -hmm. such a waste of time. And I always tell people not to like have your lawyers do settlement proposals back and forth. That's a big fat waste of time and money. You're never going to settle your case like that ever. Now, have you heard of um, anybody in a divorce case taking the decisions, and I, uh, this is someone I know, and taking it to the appellate court, appealing divorce decisions? I had never heard of that. Well, obviously you can appeal. Yeah, I mean, you can yeah. appeal divorce decisions all the time. Uh, I've never seen appeals for divorce. This is Oh, yeah. Point. Oh, yeah, yeah, all the time. Wow. It's, I mean, it's a five-year divorce. It's just, oh yeah. I used to write them. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I have a couple of written opinions myself that are out there. So yeah, I've, I've written appellate de de decisions. I've appealed them myself. Yeah. And those are, those are the kind of malignant narcissists that we're talking about where they're not even going to believe the judge. I'm better than that. I'm going to fight that. I'm going to fight that. Right. That's the difference between the covert who just gets everything and the malignant who is going to be ordered to just pay support. And let me, let me challenge that. Let me take that to appeal. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous how many judgments in this person's cases like appeal, appeal, you know? Yeah. I mean, of course you can appeal. I mean, I mean, you can't appeal if it's a, a, a written marital settlement agreement. I mean, but you can appeal if you go to trial and you don't like the decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course. I mean, that's what I tell people all the time. If you go to trial and you win everything that you want, the other side can appeal it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Kind of crazy. Kind of, kind of crazy here. Yeah. And again, then it goes on and it goes on, especially if there's lots of money. Lots of, you know, and, 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 you know, if there's a in difference in salary or in money, you know, that long term thing is going to bankrupt the one who doesn't have all the assets. Mm -hmm. I've seen it happen. And that's where they just have to stop and surrender because, well, I can't keep spending all this money I don't have. And there's no guarantee they will get a bigger piece of the pie because they fight. So they walk away. And that's a risk. Well, yeah. And especially because on appeal, it's a different standard. You're You're not allowed to add any evidence that was not um, considered on the underlying case. Mm -hmm. You're only allowed to look to see if there were errors as a matter of law or if there was a, you know, an error like that the trial judge made or something like that. I mean, so that's why only 15% of cases are overturned on appeal. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a good number to know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty low. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, so you have to win the case on, a, on, on trial. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very low number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Do yeah. you want to know some other really bad things that they're not doing? Yes. So some of the other mistakes is, is really about um, knowing their rights so that they can fight for parenting time. Again, if you, if, if your narcissist is gaslighting saying you have no right to the kids, so many people just go, oh, I guess I don't. And and then they eventually get to a lawyer and they learn the truth, but they're they're in fear for six months before they found out the truth that that isn't the way the, the law works, right? But they believe those sort of things. Um, and just really staying in mediation too long, like you said, going into mediation, I have a lot of people that go in and, and there's not even offer on the table and they nothing gets, you know, I've had people with $40,000 mediation days and nothing and sort of staying in and go, oh, let's come back next week and see if we can get nothing again. So there's a point where mediation works. And that's a point with a narcissist where they're just hard down. Nope, nope, nope. And that's when they stay too long and just, you know, have to go to the next level. Well, I mean, I would say for mediation, you need to have a very clear picture going in mm -hmm. to what you want and and what 
you have to have your option A, your option B. You have to have all your leverage ready to go. You mm -hmm. have to know what your best case scenario is, your, what your worst case scenario is, what, what I call your choke point is, mm -hmm. uh, or your walk away. And when you hit that, you got to be done. And, um, and that's that. And, yeah. and, and then be ready to go to trial. Um, yeah. Because, um, you know, I, the person who has it, 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 the most leverage is the one who's ready to walk away. Right. I mean, it, like that's when you're ready to walk away, when you're OK with, well, OK, you know, we can be done mm -hmm. um, and, and, and you're cool and you're calm. And, and this isn't about being emotional. This is about um, business, basically. <laughs> uh, I mean, even though it's children and it's money and it's your home and your business and all of whatever it is, um, this is at the end of the day, uh, a business transaction. Mm -hmm. and of assets and children time yeah it's yeah basic and, right it's it's very basic and so at the end of the day you know this is what it's going to be or it's not and and if it's not going to you're not going to agree then you can present your evidence to the court of law and and let them decide yeah exactly exactly so yeah yeah so what, what are the biggest mistakes you see Oh, I mean, getting emotional, mm -hmm. getting emotional is a huge one and letting, and letting the narcissist see that emotion, because if you, once you do that, you're game over mm -hmm. um, because you're just giving them supply at that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Never let them see you sweat. <laughs> they should make a sweatshirt out of that. Um, but it's, but it's absolutely true. It's, it's, it's a powerful tool for them to see because then they know they've got you and then they just push the button down a little bit harder and they know they can get you to crumble. So if they, you know, if you've got that air, like you just said, you know what, I'm willing to walk away. We'll take my chance in court. Go ahead. There's a different game with that. When you've got that confidence and you've got something that, you know, this is not what I'm going to settle for. And they're trying to give you a really bad deal. You have to be able to walk away and say, all right, I'll take my my chances with a judge, and yeah. that's what leverage where they're going to be like, okay, all right, let's let's come down here because again, they're also some of them like to spend money, and some of them are like, no, I don't want to waste my money. So they might come back around if you give them the clue that you're willing to walk away and you have that leverage over them. Yeah, uh, another mistake I would say is letting um, narcissists get away with things too quickly or too much. Like for example. Um, when they uh, for, uh, don't provide discovery on time or they don't um, uh, uh, comply with a court order or something like that, every single time you have to be right on their butt. So uh, file a motion to compel, file the motion for contempt, like immediately, don't let it go. I, it, like immediately on them right away. So, you know, that uh, discovery was due on June 10th, June 11th, file that motion to compel. Um, you know, they, they didn't file, they didn't send over the support uh, uh, on, you know, May 1st, like it was due. May 2nd, motion to enforce the, the order or motion to show cause why they shouldn't be held in contempt. I mean, like, don't let them get away with anything mm -hmm. because the minute you do, they think I'm getting away with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here I, I go with, you know, three, four years later that like, there's still no discovery. And, and they've done the motions to compel, motions to comply, motions to this, all of these things and contempt, and then nothing ever happens. Do you see the family court doing anything with the, the um, you know, contempt kind of things? Well, but this is why you have to keep right on it because the family court will be like, oh my God, here comes this person again. The other thing is, why are you going to them for discovery that you can get subpoenas for? I mean, st stop asking for requests for production or things like that for bank statements when you could just go directly to the bank and get a subpoena because they're not going to um, produce it um, uh, readily and they're just not going to. So if you know that, it, you know, they have 
accounts at, at at Bank of America or or Wells Fargo or some bank that is like an easily accessible bank. Mm-hmm. Stop wasting your money on on motions to compel from from this person it, w- w- because it's not that much money to issue a subpoena directly to that bank and just say, give me 12 months of bank statements from, you know, Ray Schmo with this particular um, social security number. It's mm-hmm. it's way cheaper and you'll get it all. Mm-hmm. So I, I suggest that you just get a subpoena for, for that bank. Mm-hmm. Seriously, you'll, you'll save yourself a, he- a hell of a lot of time, money and headache. Mm-hmm. So, so that's what I really do suggest that you do for, for, um, financial documents, um, because they're not going to produce it. They're not, Mm -hmm. and you're just going to, you're going to spend a whole lot of paralegal time while your paralegal pages through and looks for, oh, because they just decided to be a jackass. They didn't give you page 10 of of June and they didn't give you uh month, uh, you know, July of this you, th- because they just don't want to, or they they're withholding. And now you just paid the paralegal $125 an hour or whatever it is to go through all those statements and find that out. And now you got to pay the attorney, the, the, the letter to send to the lawyer yeah, you didn't do this because they have to do some sort of a letter to make it look like you went along and tried to, you know, settle it first because you got to do that before you can file the motion to compel. So there's all these steps of fees before you have to do all of this. So you might as well just go send the subpoena out. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I should have done that. I actually laminated the last page of my divorce decree. Not many people do that, but my husband was in contempt six out of our seven trials for never handing in paperwork. So we kept having to go back and have another trial because we don't have any paperwork and we go back and we go back and we go back. And so when it came to the legal fees question, the judge said, um, you know, I don't know why both of your fees, Tracy says it's because we have to keep coming back because he's in contempt six times, but his side, and I'm not going to hold it up because this is too big but they said it was a witch hunt to get the paperwork he was in contempt for and Mm -hmm. this was in 2012 a witch hunt to get the paperwork we should have just subpoenaed it like you said it would have saved me a hundred thousand dollars of going to court seven times right so this is the lesson for everybody that take the actions and ask your lawyer if they are sitting there holding up the thing and going, oh, we'll give them another week or I sent their, their lawyer an email and I haven't heard back in three weeks you have to take the lawyer and be like, please file, get me a subpoena to get these records and and stop this hamster wheel of you wasting money, hoping that they'll give you a piece of paper. Just go get it. Just go get it. Yeah. Just go get it because yeah. you're not going to get it. They're not going to give it to you. So just go get it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something that'll just save you so much money and time right there, right there that right. I just gave you. You, that was a good one. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, a lot of people. Yeah. So um, I would say that's, uh, that's another one that I see. Um, there was something else that I thought of um, that um, you were asking me what mistakes that I saw. I um, can't remember now, but um, it's another huge one that I thought of. Um, but I, I mean, I would say you have a book. Mm-hmm. Tell me, tell us about your book and tell us about your website. I do. So my book is called Divorcing Your Narcissist. You can't make this shit up. Um, the covert tricks they pull and the strategies to become a survivor. And um, you could reach me and find out more about all of my work at, on NarcissistAbuseSupport.com. And my YouTube channel, you can find all the links to all my social media there. And um, yeah, I help people all over the world go through a divorce and recover from their mother. So it's sort of a, 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 you get a hybrid. I'm not just a divorce coach. I also help them so much with the emotional stuff. And I teach classes. So trust and guilt and shame are like, you know, that's what I deal 
fall in and I help people get through that. So it's important for people to understand that there's people out there that are there to support you and, and they can help you not spend as much on legal fees because you're not running to them with, you know, the, oh my God, he did this. Oh no. You know, it's like, okay, well that one will matter. That one won't. Let's tell your lawyer this and, and get the right information and building the right team, I think is another big mistake where people are like, I can't even afford a, a divorce attorney, but I'm going to pay them $500 an hour. If you had a coach for three or four hours, it would probably equal that and you'd get a lot more answers and you'd be a lot stronger emotionally as well. Mm, so true. So true. So what is your website? Narcissistabusesupport.com. Yes. And where can they get your book? Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Audible, anywhere. Yes. All right. So go check her out. Go follow her. Where can they follow you? Where are you on Instagram and all of that? Uh, Tracy A. Malone everywhere. Yes. yes. And your YouTube channel is? Tracy A. Malone. <laughs> all right. So go check her out. Follow her. Such good stuff. Thank you, Tracy. I absolutely adore you. I think you're so great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right.